I'm Kate, and I'm 58 years old. I work as a neurologist at a university hospital in France. Since my daughter is on a short study trip to America, I decided to take a long break. How many years has it been? Visiting the university hospital, where I used to work, brings back both happy and sad memories. While sitting at the cafe terrace I used to visit during breaks, drinking coffee, I realized that 18 years have passed. The view outside has changed a bit, but under the same clear blue sky, I suddenly remembered my ex-husband's words. I prefer a smart child born to a 23-year-old woman than a child born to an older woman. His unexpected words left me shocked. What do you mean by that? It's obvious. As a doctor, you know the risks of older pregnancies, right? Your statement isn't about maternal health or childbirth itself exactly. It's about the child's abilities. Why are you bringing this up now? You knew this from the start, didn't you? That's why we pursued fertility treatments. Well, that's true. I did want a child then. But things have changed. I don't understand. I truly didn't understand. As a doctor couple, me, a neurologist, and him, a plastic surgeon, we struggled with infertility for two years. Finally, at age 40, we conceived through fertility treatments. When I got pregnant, Noah, my ex-husband, was thrilled and became very protective until we reached a stable stage in the pregnancy. Friends, colleagues, and family joked that the real challenge would come after the baby was born. We were so happy, but within a few months, Noah said those shocking words. Did you really not realize? Huh? Didn't notice what? I was aware of what was happening outside the house. There was no way I hadn't noticed, but there was also the reality of our growing family. A few months later I began to think, this can't continue. I struggled to gather my courage, staying up late to wait for Noah to return home, trying to start a conversation many times. And on that day, I waited again. Welcome back. Oh, you're awake. Yeah, I wanted to talk. Whether Noah understood my feelings or not, his indifferent response was all I received. Hey, I got an invitation to attend the hospital's dad class today. Do you want to go? Huh? Apparently most husbands attend the class. I'm not going. Huh? I said I'm not going. I'm not interested. Not interested? I'm a doctor, you know. I've seen countless pediatric patients. I don't have a problem with kids, so isn't that enough? But raising our own child from infancy is completely different. Even though I'm a doctor, I have no idea about childbirth or parenting. It's beyond what I can imagine. That's your perspective. Mine is different. I'm fine, so I'm not going. End of discussion. Noah remained uninterested and exerted pressure, but I lacked the courage to continue. One of my colleagues mentioned she saw him. Cheating? She saw you recently in the city, arm in arm with a young girl, happily shopping in a department store. Oh, really? Was that person stalking me or something? No, she just happened to be there and saw you. But she decided to gossip and use the word cheating. If it's untrue, that's slander, right? Huh? That's not the point. That's exactly the point. You realize I'm being suspected, right? It's a story where no one knows if it's true or not. So is it a lie? Well, my clinic focuses on beauty treatments, so it mostly employs young women. Women can be competitive with each other, you know? To keep them happy, I offer meals, shopping, and relaxation to recognize their hard work at a popular clinic. So, you're doing the same with other staff, not just the person my colleague saw. You could say that. So, you're neglecting our family for that? Kate, think about this. Without those girls, the clinic wouldn't succeed. They contribute to our income, right? So, thanks to them, we can maintain our household. Calling it neglect seems a bit harsh, don't you think? Noah smirked as he spoke, making valid points but also saying hurtful things. What's relaxation anyway? Is it code for hotel escapades? My colleague mentioned seeing him entering a hotel with a woman. It's a hotel Noah often uses for business dinners. When I heard that, I felt it was damning, but I couldn't bring myself to say it out loud. Maybe Noah had been hiding such activities since the early days of the clinic, focusing less on home once the money started coming in. After that, he seemed to hide less, spending less time at home. We're back to that initial suspicion. One day, as soon as he came home, he called out to my bedroom. Come here. I opened the door to find a flashy young woman sitting on the sofa, smiling faintly. Ah, is she the woman my colleague mentioned? My muttering caught Noah's attention immediately. So this girl here is going to be my official wife from now on, and she's already pregnant. I see. So what happens to me? Divorce, obviously. You can't just divorce me so easily. Easy or not, I have to take responsibility for this child. And what about your responsibility to me? Money, money. I'll give you more than enough. There will be a divorce settlement anyway. I could even give some money to that unborn child. It's coming from your old-fashioned womb. I'll provide enough to cover any shortfalls, so just hurry up, sign it, and disappear.
With that, a pre-filled divorce form was placed on the table in front of me. The woman smirked, muttering disgusting under her breath as she looked at me. Being in the same space as these people was unbearable, and above all, I realized that Noah could no longer be considered my husband. From there, things moved quickly. We agreed to involve lawyers and decided that I would hold on to the divorce form. I couldn't bear to live in the same house with him anymore. So I quickly packed my essentials into a suitcase and left the house. Eighteen years later, returning to America, I never expected a chance encounter. Lost in thought, I noticed a figure approaching nearby. Just as I turned to look, I heard a voice I never wanted to hear again. Kate. It was Noah. It's been a while. Unable to ignore the greeting, I replied calmly. As he approached, he chuckled and spoke again. So you're back from France with your tail between your legs? You went to France, right? Feeling the pressure and came back to rely on your alma mater. His mocking smile revealed his true nature, leaving a sinking feeling in my stomach. Just a regular homecoming. My child had things to do in America, so we're here together today. So that child from back then, I see. Why are you here together? Is that child sick or something? His words left me stunned. I prefer a smart child born to a 23-year-old woman than a child born to an older woman. Noah's hurtful words echoed in my mind, and my heart sank once again as I struggled to respond. Footsteps approached from behind. Mom, who is he? Grace's voice brought me back to the present. She looked at Noah cautiously, and upon seeing her, Noah glanced at me suspiciously. Smirking, I said to him, This is Grace, my daughter, and biologically, yours too. My words left Noah wide-eyed in shock. It wasn't surprising. Grace was tall, beautiful, and carried herself with elegance. Plus, if Noah had been keeping tabs, he might have heard the rumors about her. Carefully choosing his words, Noah asked me, Wait, could she be Grace from the surgical research lab? Bingo, Grace is here for a temporary stint in the surgical research lab. Noah was speechless, and I couldn't help but laugh. The child he had abandoned before birth had grown into an exceptional medical student after 18 years. Moreover, Noah had assumed that a child born from an older pregnancy would be less capable or have health issues. He could never have imagined that she would become such a talented young woman. Surprised, aren't you? The woman you discarded, who you used to criticize about her age during pregnancy, has turned out like this. And Grace is even skipping grades, she's a second-year medical student at just 18. She's already graduated from university. I couldn't help but smile at Noah's clueless reaction. Don't you know about the education system in France? Shut up. With all your knowledge, I thought you'd be aware. No reluctantly apologized, biting his lip. His pride was immense. Even in our marriage, he would bristle at any criticism from me. Now approaching sixty, it seemed little had changed. Quietly, I continued, Grace graduated from high school at fifteen and college at seventeen. She's worked so hard, despite me being a single parent. She's an exceptional daughter, both inside and out. She's my pride and joy. I beamed proudly, but Noah, clearly frustrated, threw out a statement that demanded attention. Ha, huh, you must have used your authority as a doctor to pull strings, right? Maybe you're even a professor over there. With that kind of power, you could manipulate anything. High school, college, even medical school. But don't think I'm like you. Is that so? Is that your version? Sending your child to low-ranking high schools, struggling to get into any university, let alone dental school. You probably managed to finagle your child into some countryside medical school, right? How did you find out? I ran into someone who knew you from junior high and high school. Heard quite a bit. Caught off guard, Noah seemed desperate to know who it was. Who was it? He asked eagerly, almost childlike. Annoyed, I ignored him and took a sip of the coffee in front of me. Its familiar taste eased my troubled heart a little. One of the hospitals affiliated with the university where Grace was accepted is managed by an American. He seemed eager for me to start working at the university hospital right away, but I was pregnant at the time. So he suggested I teach at the university and work part-time at the clinic. It turns out he knew about my situation and asked about Noah. I didn't know him personally, but he mentioned hearing about me and my husband. I've heard rumors, too, about how being wealthy lets you push people around or play games with others. Noah's family were countryside landowners, wealthy and influential. As an only child, he fit the stereotype of a typical rich kid who could do as he pleased. Who told you all this? Tell me. It doesn't matter who it was. Your reputation precedes you, right? Your behavior has been talked about among your peers and acquaintances, who said it doesn't change the truth. To silence him from further protests, I added firmly, that person warned me that I was being used. Ha! Huh. At first, I didn't understand, but after listening carefully, it all became clear. You, coming from the countryside, and me, living in the city. When we first met at our new workplace, I didn't know anything about your background. That ignorance was convenient for you, wasn't it? 
So you figured it out. Yeah, that's right. We were both new at work, and I had just moved from the countryside where no one knew me. You, being new too, didn't know about my troubled past or my character. You were convenient for me. What's wrong with that? Finally, Noah admitted it, and I confronted him directly. But that's not all, is it? Huh? You wanted a talented child, a child who could compensate for your own insecurities, right? So you wanted me. No, you wanted my position and genetics, didn't you? You desired my successful career and genetics, which are the opposite of yours, didn't you? What do you mean by opposite? Don't say foolish things in front of the child. No, you shouldn't speak that way in front of our child. Even after admitting everything, he tried to protect his pride. His petty behavior disgusted me. Don't worry, Grace knows everything. Huh, everything. Everything including how you abandoned both Grace and me in pursuit of your ideal child and your entire history. What? Did you spill everything? I simply stated the truth, how you disappeared before Grace was born. Trying to deceive Grace, who is so perceptive, won't work. I don't understand, Noah's voice echoed loudly in the quiet cafe terrace. Then Grace, who had been silent until then, spoke up. Don't you think it's pathetic? Huh? I'm asking, don't you think it's pathetic? Why should I care what you think, you little brat? Even to someone you see as a brat, your actions are pathetic. Noah was clearly taken aback by his daughter's words. He clenched his teeth, face turning red with embarrassment. Grace continued, observing him calmly, as my mother said, I know everything, not just about the past, but also about what's happening now. Huh? I never expected you to beg the professor who's looking after me. I also heard the clinic went bankrupt. What? Due to repeated failures in plastic surgeries, a decline in customers, embezzlement, and failed investments. It probably all began 18 years ago. How dare you say such things? It started when you abandoned my mother and chose someone else. Or perhaps it started when you started making easy money at the clinic and got involved with someone blinded by money. Their presence turned you into a greedy monster and led to your downfall. Grace's words struck Noah hard, making his face even redder and his lips tremble. Why don't you admit it? You're a terrible person, someone who ruins lives. Isn't this just karma catching up with you? Can't you see that? Wait, what? You think I ruin lives? Because of our breakup, Kate became a professor in France, and now you're going to medical school at 18. It's all because of me, isn't it? What? Are you kidding me? Grace's voice remained steady and clear. It's not because of you. That's just how things turned out. Sure, the divorce might have been a trigger, but my acceptance into university right after was the result of my mother's hard work up until then. And my effort to attend medical school early is also because of her constant support. She's always been someone who works hard and cares for others, and that's why good things come to her. But for someone who easily discards others and ends up ruining their workplace, there's a sad reality waiting where they'll have to rely on their dwindling pride. I saw a new side of grace in that moment. While we've had heated discussions before due to differences, I'd never seen her raise her voice or express anger towards someone. Though I've had my moments of heightened emotion, quietly absorbing feedback from others, including Grace herself, I never expected her to see me that way or have those thoughts. Yet even faced with Grace's undeniable reasoning, Noah struggled to control his emotions. What? You wouldn't even exist if it weren't for me. Everything is thanks to me, right? How can you say that to your own child? I intervened, my voice tinged with anger and sadness. It's okay, Mom. It doesn't bother me. I'm grateful for being born, but technically, it's thanks to my grandparents who supported you all those years. Noah clearly hadn't expected his parents to be brought into the discussion. He froze, his expression stunned. I kept in touch with your parents even after we separated, and they shown concern for Grace. But you wouldn't know that because you cut ties with them after our divorce. What? You're still in contact with my parents? Did you manipulate them against me to gain allies? No, Noah. Your grandparents disowned you because you cheated on me and remarried. You barely graduated from medical school with financial help, struggled to obtain your medical license after numerous private lessons, and barely held a mediocre position at a general hospital after an additional year under senior doctor's shadows. Unable to accept this due to your pride, you convinced your parents to open a cosmetic clinic for you. However, you became enamored with the plastic surgery trend, resumed womanizing during your residency, and started hiring based on your personal interests. It became a harem-like environment, culminating in impregnating a nurse over two decades younger, abandoning your family, and ultimately causing the collapse of the clinic built by your parents. What more could your grandparents possibly do for you? Overwhelmed by Grace's relentless recounting of Noah's troubled history, delivered flawlessly, Noah could only stammer incomprehensible words in agony. As he struggled to make sense of the situation, a strange calm seemed to settle over him, prompting him to say something outrageous. So why don't you connect us, huh? 
I heard you were asking around in the lab earlier. After my clinic closed, I've been struggling to find work. I imagine you're facing challenges too, reaching out to your mother's former workplace for help. Everyone's been distant. If you, the talented daughter of Kate, who is respected and trusted despite our unfortunate split, were to offer assistance to your reunited father, surely they'd lend a hand, right? Noah lamented like a tragic figure, making such unusual requests, while Grace and I exchanged knowing glances, sighing with pity. Crying to a child you abandoned? That's pretty pathetic and uncool, isn't it? Shut up. You don't know anything about me. I don't know, don't want to know, and have no interest in knowing. I have no interest in someone who, despite being a doctor, lacks empathy, only thinks of themselves, and ends up causing medical mishaps. And it's quite odd to come seeking sympathy from Grace. Don't you have a talented child at home? Ask them for help. Mine is impossible. I only managed to get her into a decent private women's college through connections and money. Ha, huh, you solved it with money again, just like always. Money can fix anything for you. Noah, stirred up by his past being brought up, retorted with a red face, but fundamentally, things shouldn't be solved with money. It's wrong to decide someone's fate with money. Sometimes, even money can't fix things, you know. Did you know that one of the victims of your medical mishaps was a relative of my professor? I believe it was my mentor Professor Ted's niece. She had surgery at your clinic, and there were complications with her facial muscles. Could it be that there are issues that money couldn't solve? It seems like you closed the clinic to avoid dealing with inconvenient cases that money couldn't fix, huh? But you know, people in the medical field are connected in various ways. Like me, I've ended up connecting with your colleagues and friends. Whether my words were getting through to him or not, Noah's face turned pale, and he started sweating profusely, freezing in place with trembling eyeballs. It's okay, Noah. Everything will unfold just as you fear. Are you so scared that you can't even speak? This is your mess to deal with now. You never cared about anyone else's well-being for your own gain, right? Just try to keep that dark spirit of yours in check, at least. Wait, am I really? Won't someone eventually come for you? You seem so focused on securing your job that you haven't noticed. You're kidding, right? This can't be some made-up story. You won't need to look for work anymore. Even if you manage to find something, you won't be able to work anyway. Haha, <laughs> you're delusional. If that's what you believe, then so be it. Enjoy your time with your family for now. With those final words, I gently touched Grace's arm, signaling it was time to go. Grace returned the touch with a soft smile. After about two months of intense medical studies in America, she returned to France. America was amazing. The food was delicious, people were kind, professors and seniors were respectful, and the discussions were fascinating. I might consider returning to America in the future. Grace seemed to have gained new perspectives and emotions from her deep immersion in American culture during her study abroad, unlike her occasional visits before. That's great to hear. Let me know if you need anything. I should also thank the professors. Sure, I'll keep that in mind, Grace replied, wrinkling her nose at a sweet French juice she hadn't tasted in a while. Oh, by the way, did he get caught? Yay. During Grace's time studying abroad, Noah was arrested. The scandal surrounding his failed cosmetic clinic, which resulted in multiple medical mishaps involving staff members, dominated headlines on American news and variety shows daily. Grace must have been aware of it all. Grace returned from her studies with unexpected outcomes. Now 18, she has always been mature and hardworking. While utilizing one's talents is crucial, as someone with over 30 years of medical experience, I deeply believe that medicine must be practiced with compassion. Medicine is about improving lives, and people are at the heart of it all. In the coming years, Grace is bound to grow significantly as a person. As both a parent and a seasoned medical professional, I will quietly support Grace from the sidelines, sometimes walking alongside her. This journey will undoubtedly be a lifelong endeavor, 